In this video, I wanted to quickly go over what my engineering or web development tech notebook looks like. I've seen this idea on Hacker News, on Reddit, on a few different places, um, discussing the idea of keeping a notebook for notes about programming so that they're easy to refer back to um, as you're you know, using languages or you, as you're working and otherwise. Um, and it's also a good place to store errors, meaning that if you come across an error or a difficulty when setting something up or making something work, it's a good idea to keep it here and kind of document how you got to the solution. Um, I've seen some really cool notebooks. Uh, some people create GitHub repos uh, with lots of folders and lots of markdown files that detail exactly uh, how to do what. Uh, some people create blogs, so every time they have a new note, they'll just create a new blog post. And I've seen this setup, uh, people using uh, Emacs with org mode to keep track of their notes. Um, I don't want to go over what uh, org mode is, but just think about it as a plain text file that gets read by org mode in Emacs. And the org mode allows you to traverse through it as if it was like an interactive list, right? So you can hide a list, you can expand it fully, you can add tags, you can add some options up here. Uh, you can actually export this as a markdown file or an HTML or a PDF even. Um, there are a variety of ways of exporting this kind of file. Uh, there's a variety of ways of searching through it. Um, you can use plain text search with just control S. Uh, you can see on the bottom that search uh, started. Actually, I think I can use uh, regex in there as well. Uh, oh no, get away. Okay, um, so I wanted to just kind of go through what mine looks like, how it's set up, and what I use it for. Uh, as you can see, I got when I got started with this notebook, Emacs was what I was studying. Um, this is I came across the idea as I was learning Emacs, and I was already starting to write down some notes in a different org file. I had like a playground org file to learn org mode. Um, and so this is actually where I keep everything. And there are a few things that I look up um, somewhat frequently. One of them is the replace. Uh, shortcut. I don't. I can never remember it. Um, and there are a few other things. Uh, common, uncommon. I don't really use that. Uh, there we go. So I, sometimes I use it to look up the syntax for opening up a list of buffers, marking, saving, closing, and so on. And I find it very useful because um, the notes are written for me, and so it's pretty easy for me to remember how I um, how I structured it and how to find what I'm looking for. Uh, the other thing that I do keep in here, and I've had to reference this many, many times, and I'm so glad that I have this, uh, is uh, is the errors, right? Are the errors? So I have a I have a heading for Docker, and I actually have a subheading here for troubleshooting. And if I ever come across an error called Windows Pipe Error, uh, the troubleshooting for Docker not starting, um, you know, eventually, or I guess conceivably, I could see another heading being there that you know Docker is starting, but there's some other issue. Uh, Windows Pipe Error, I've run into this many times, and it really just means that Docker is not running, or it's not binding to the right port. Uh, this has happened to me on several different laptops before, where Docker would either randomly crash, or it would say that it's running, but it's not really. Uh, the, the easiest and best way to fix it is just to restart, but it does, if it doesn't work, um, it's actually not too difficult to go to Docker, you know, do a factory setting, make sure to enable the, the exposed daemon, uh, functionality, which allows you to use, to access Docker through um, the Windows subsystem, the Linux subsystem, whatever it's called. Um, so I've, I found myself looking through that a lot. Um, there was another thing that I had to look up actually today, and that was the command from Docker Compose to look up the logs of a certain image. Um, so it was pretty easy to just go into Docker, Docker, and I you know searched actually just for logs, and this was one of the things that came up. And I immediately knew that this is uh, this is the command that I was looking for. I couldn't remember the syntax. Um, I did have to look it up in documentation, but I wasn't entirely sure. You know, it didn't mention this uh, last part where you can specify the exact image name. So it got a little bit confusing, but my notebook kind of came to rescue. Um, I keep notes here for work-related projects as well. So the Holocron is one of my work-related projects. Um, I can't open that subheading, um, but I actually do have a tag with Docker on it uh, within Holocron uh, because we use Docker at work. And uh, it uh, there, are, there are some specific commands on what I can do in Docker 
specific to this project. So I find the tags pretty useful with that, uh, more so telling me what I'm looking at than uh, searching. I'm not that, you know, I'm not that um, eloquent when it comes to org mode. I just use it in a very basic way, and the tags are honestly there more as a, uh, you know, I'll eventually get to uh, using the tags in a, you know, pro user way, but right now, they're just there to help me kind of figure out what I'm looking at. Um, I have a lot of, you know, some of the, the shortcuts for, let's say, VS Code over here. Um, these are custom shortcuts. Um, maybe I should have uh, separated those out in their own area. Uh, but again, I keep, uh, it, it's very important to me to actually keep um, track of these shortcuts. I don't remember them. And most editors have a really weird way of looking up all the shortcuts for everything, especially the custom ones and especially the ones that I want to remember. So this was a kind of a, a, a better trade off for doing so. Uh, one huge thing about org mode is that you can embed uh, code samples. Um, and you can actually run the code. I'm not going to run it right now. It looks like the, the way I have a uh, TypeScript set up with uh, with uh, uh, I think it's called org babel. Um, I didn't set it up correctly, so I'm actually not getting the output that I'm looking for. So for the time being, um, all I really get is the ability to create source blocks and then get full syntax highlighting within those so source blocks. Uh, you might not be a fan of the way that all of this looks. Uh, I'm using one of the very I don't know default themes. I think this is called Deeper Blue. Um, but some of the other themes that I've seen out there and some of my coworkers use um, actually push this over and indent it and highlight it a different color, kind of like I'm doing right now manually, um, so that you have an easier way or easier time looking through the code sample and seeing where the text ends and where the code sample begins. Um, I use this to I use this to keep uh, track of some of these ideas. Um, I use it to keep track of, uh, let's see, um, you know, I recently made a video on uh, generics, and so I actually ke kept this here um, so that I would remember how to use it, uh, and look at that, expect return type um, will be actually an array instead of a usual one, and yeah. So I, I think it's a good idea to keep this notebook. I think you shouldn't really go too crazy with it. Um, it's the simpler you are, the better, the more, I would say, um, the more you keep up with this without feeling overwhelmed, the, be the better you're gonna be, the better off you're gonna be. Uh, so for example, you know, you don't have to write down every single thing that you learn, but if you write down some of the more important stuff, you're gonna see your notebook grow and become um, a bigger part of your workflow. And as it becomes a bigger part of your workflow, it'll be easier to keep updating it and uh, to keep um, expanding on it and relying on it. So again, you know, it kind of builds, builds on itself. Um, I really like doing it because a lot of times I have notes that I want to put down somewhere and I've used solutions like Evernote and whatever else. And those are great, but I, I feel like I've been burned by Evernote just because of the fact that it's, you know, they, they allow you to export your data, but it, it is not in a format that's very agreeable. With org mode, org mode is gonna be around forever. Um, there are org mode extensions for even VS Code, so you can use org mode to a limited in a limited capacity in VS Code. Um, and uh, org mode always lets you export in a huge variety of formats. So I, I find this like a safe way to store notes. Um, and with the, the, the syntax highlighting, the code embedding, um, you know, it has all the features that I might need from a, uh, a note-taking uh, application that lets me take notes on, you know, web dev tech programming stuff. Uh, I do use this for personal, uh, for personal notes as well. I have another notebook that's called just notebook.org. And within it, I keep stuff like finance ideas, uh, fina uh, financial actual information, um, nothing nothing super secure, like not passwords or anything like that, or credit card numbers, but more of um, different tables of budgets and whatever. Um, I created a subheading for selling my house. So I wrote down a list of things that I need to do to get to sell the house, a list of things I need to watch out for. And uh, I often actually, start, I started embedding resources. So if I... I mean, Vim should be a whole notebook for me by itself because I'm a huge Vim person. I love using Vim. 
um, and there's just so many things I would love to write down notes on. But again, I'm trying not to overwhelm myself. Um, I did leave some resources here, how to do 90% of what uh, plugins do with just them. And this was actually a really cool resource and I've looked for it before. I've lost it and looked for it before. So I was really happy to keep that in here. Um, I do keep a list of apps that I like. Um, there are some utilities. Uh, audio switch is an awesome audio switcher for Windows 10. Um, I highly recommend it, but I keep this here. And again, um, I lose track of utilities. I lose track of programs that I use. Or I lose track of really useful, useful stuff. So it's always um, really awesome to keep that information somewhere. And I know that I can always access it. Um, if you have any questions, if you have your own public notebooks that you would like to share, go ahead and post them in the comments. And I'd love to look through them. I would love to read them.